this morning we're going to have a go at this uh, market stall, this shop uh, vegetable stall, fruit stall here in France, in Provence. Quite a nice one. It was, as you see at the beginning of the film, a longer picture this way. I've shortened it down. I don't want all of this fruit in this particular one. And I was going to do this as an acrylic, but I thought actually it'd be quite fun to do it as a uh, watercolour. I'm going to use the Russian ones again, uh, because they're a bit heavier and darker, and I think they'll suit this better. But uh, again, I don't want to go into too much detail on the fruit. We're going to treat the fruit very loosely, and uh, still trying to keep this fairly loose watercolour. Quite a bit of dry brush work, I hope, on this one. Um, and let's here we go with this then, shall we? So we'll start on salient points and things like the figures and things here. Um, and work our way up, leaving lots of lights and sparkle on this painting if we can. So, we hope to keep things fairly lively and fairly loose. Um, watercolour always dries a little bit lighter than when you put it on, so I'm going to treat it again a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to treat it in that way and be a little bit stronger than I would normally be. To start with a bit of Cabernet Orange on her face here, and to start straight off under hair, right through with the whole thing. Fairly light wash at first. Um, just to feel my weights. I feel a little bit tentative when I first start on this, um, but let's see how we go. So I'm going to put a coat of orange over, then I want to drop in a bit of purple. It's not easy with these particular paints because I don't know these paints that well. Um, but they come round down here into the purple, the purple of that, into her face, and a bit stronger down here maybe. A little bit stronger on this, out of the purple there. Right through into her hair. So we'll let that just glow. And this side here, a bit warmer, to take a bit of deeper red. More colour there than you might think, so I'm going to drop these lovely rich deep colours in here in shadow. Right down through there. Up through into here. And I'm going to go back to that very deep purple. Drop that down this side of the head. You see all these colours and things. So I might just use a couple of colours and just a wash. Just one or two colours, but you know me, I like to find more colour in things and uh, bring them out. So right down there with that. And I'm going to take some slightly deeper blue. Bring that round the outside here to really give the feeling of shadow. Now what I might have to do now is just let that dry a bit because uh, otherwise I'm just going to have one big flood of colour and I do want to start to find now some form. So let that dark dry in before I put a little bit of detail, hint a little bit of detail into there in a moment. A little bit more colour here and there, just a tad more blue just on the side of her face here. And we'll want some on that. Uh, that that's, that's drying. I'm going to come across to the face over here. Do the same thing over here, drop in this orange. It's very light I know, and a little bit of um, yellow ochre right through her face here. Down into her ears here. And it comes down the neck then. Maybe a tad of green, which means enough. A little bit of green coming in down, down to the face here just to soften it back a bit. Okay, we carry on down and round. It's very, very deep blue purples going on here now. Let's start to work those up into there. Right down around her hair here. It's interesting, isn't it? It's different again. I we'll, um, just want one colour flowing into another one, form flowing into another there. I'll do the dark fan there in just a moment. So I do, she's quite an attractive girl. And we can just see a smile and face here. We don't want too much, just, just, a, so just a hint there. There, and hopefully that'll be enough for those. Now let's look at this face over here while I'm at it. What have we got going on there? A nice warm purple brown going on there as well. Quite dark against the background light there. Bring that down. So it's nice to keep changing these techniques and methods 
as I say, deliberately for these subjects that we're doing. Try and get the shape of the arm right. That's the important thing here, where the biceps comes down and then the forearm comes in. And the hand's just indicated there, the light's going to go around it. So it's, so it's this business of the salient points that I mentioned a while ago to you. And we can paint in salient points in pictures first. The details of some things you want to bring out and then go loose around them, which is what I'm going to do here. Right, by right, now this should have dried up here, yeah. So, come back up there. A little red. And, uh, bring out some of these salient points. The strokes here and there. Have some fun doing this fruit in a minute, aren't I? Talking of fruit, let's just work on this bit here. Let's see what we can do wet into wet for these oranges. Take some chrome yellow. <coughs> Go down through here. They're not that bright an orange, so I'm going to drop them back a bit. But we'll start fairly light and gradually let them go darker as I go on. Just let the wet into wet do the work for the oranges then. Now I'm going to bring them down with a deeper yellow. Put a bit of green in now. That should certainly take them down. I find that with daffodils, green in daffodils is very good with the yellow. And finally, of course, yellow and purple are opposites. I so will bring a bit of purple into those to make the warms and the green stand out. And there's our little bunch of oranges already. If they're too dark, we can always glaze them down a bit more later. But I think they'll probably be when they dry out. Well, I've got that lovely colour on my brush. These oranges. Let's look at this basket. Put that salient point in there of the basket. And uh, come down here, leak into the yellow ochre again. Let's put some green on there because it must be too yellow otherwise. So some green now to this yellow. With the basket, we'll just let it dry a bit. A bit, a bit pinker just down there. So I'll take a bit of the purple, just come down there with a bit of purple pink. And we'll uh, same down here, we'll let the wet into wet lines down here start to give us a feeling as it spreads out of basketry. bushy thing of some sort, I'm just growing a plant here or some such. I'll just bring that around her arm, back into there. And, uh, all right, I think I'll move on to my slightly larger brushes and start to do some of this uh, work in and around here soon. Carry on there. Very enjoyable doing a painting like this, it should be of course. It's hard to know where to go, there's so much to enjoy, there's so much to do. Uh, it's quite difficult to know where to go at times. Just put the right colours and the right shapes in the right places and things just sort of tend to appear, don't they? It's just like a jigsaw. A different way of painting again. We've just been doing a bit stronger there. We go. I'll just bring some of these. We can leave these lights shining around. So we've got the darks against the lights again here. And again, we can come back with bits of dark here and there again afterwards. And we can darken down any part we like whenever we like, if it's needed.
to pick up my little mop now. Just going to get working with that. Start working in some of these beautiful colours here. So we can do there then. We'll start with the light colours first as before. Just through there a moment and come back over there in a minute to give the indication of um, lettering around there by hopefully painting around it. Be brave at times and uh, go for it. Be careful as I flick my brush on, I don't flick it in quite the wrong place. <laughs> Darker still there, bring it out more and more. Here, I haven't started on these fruits yet, they're rather fun. How am I going to do that? Let's have a look. Um, what we're going to want some quite light mauves and reds, I think, into the wet into wet here in a minute. Let's just get these, these light colours sorted out here. Just these little washes and glazes first of all. It's lovely. Colours that are going to be blending one into another here as I hopefully gradually pick it out. Very loosely. I don't want to get into detail of painting every bit of fruit in. This is what I'm going to be against in this. On and at it. Off we go again. We're still enjoying colour very much enjoying colour here. Start to bring in some wonderful cool blues and put the colours down here where they should be. And this probably will be the last in the secret series for the moment, series three. These figures chat to each other about daily life and people that are walking by and what's going on. I hope enjoying it as much as I am because it's lovely to work these paintings up this way. I don't want to be painting in every single plum. All I want to be doing is just indicating and feeling and giving an impression of these. We're going to let them go very much wet into wet and blend and just finding where all the little shapes are, just indicating them at the moment. These glorious wet into wet, lovely wet into wet shapes we can get. I'll start on some of the yellows on the lemons. See how this works. All quite new to me. I haven't painted you know these objects and these colours before, so. It's all experimental for me, it might work, it might not, but at the end of the day, it's a piece of paper and a few paints, and that's not going to break the bank at the moment. Yes, it'd be nice to sell some more work, yes, it'd be nice to, because the more I sell, the more I produce, the more I paint, obviously, and uh, it's compound interest for me, but I say it's not going to make a mistake and I have to throw one away even. Doesn't happen much because I can usually do something with them. Um, I'm still enjoying and I'm still learning and I'm still exploring and experimenting. Let's really drop this yellow in as a glaze over most of this, I think. Just leaving a few little bits of light here and there. Now I'm going to play with my warm and cool reds. Right, talking of, of reds, here we go. Let's start to make these plums happen if we can. These glorious rich red plums. A little bit more purple here and there yet too I think. This is the beauty of these Russian colours is they're so beautifully rich and dark. Strong and powerful in pigment we can really pick up these beautiful colours. So 
absolutely lovely way to work. I'm not trying to, as you can see, I'm trying to paint every plumbing by any means, just get the effects, get the impression of these colours. And the same is going to be happening with the melons a bit. We can start to just draw the lines around these melons maybe a little now. So rather than painting exact plums, we are indicating plums. We are making an impression of plums. And again into the cherries we have to place the deeper colours. Again wet into wet in this case just to start to get the effects of nice light and bright painting coming out of it but it's, uh, it's certainly interesting to uh, experiment and explore like this and you've got to decide when it is you think you've finished how much far, how much further do you think I ought to go some would say it's almost done now I think <clears throat> just pick up some of these darks here and there maybe come in with a smaller brush just to touch up one or two spots but I don't think it needs an awful lot now we have to start getting mucky there, it's just starting to get a little bit dead, so I'll be careful. Now, the idea is just to squint down at it slightly and you'll find the, the light coming. Possibly a few little bits of colour just here and there, some radish going on here. Maybe a little bit of dark just here and there, <clears throat> just to finish off. Well, there we are, it's quite fun, isn't it? Nice and lively and loose, and uh, perhaps it captures the effect of that moment. Well, I think I'm about done there now. I did a bit more tidying up to it, but uh, it'll do now, I think.